Battery life is, I'd say, the biggest bottleneck to today's smartphone experience, and whilst there are new battery technologies on the horizon, chargers have just received a silent, but at the same time completely game-changing update, and that's the next best thing. Take a look at this, the Anker PowerPort Atom PD-1. Okay, it doesn't look all that revolutionary, but bear with me here. This provides 30 watts of power in a footprint this large. In fact, if you put it side by side with the equivalently powerful 12-inch MacBook charger, it's about 40% smaller. It's barely larger than a 5-watt iPhone charger. We've seen the same tech scaled up by a company called RavPower, who've built a 45-watt supercharger that's half the size of a MacBook charger. And that's not even the core bit, but before we can get to that, What's going on here? You've probably heard of silicon. Silicon is literally everywhere on this planet. It actually makes up about 25% of the Earth's crust, and this abundance is mostly why it's become the default choice for semiconductors, the building block for all kinds of electronic devices. Anyways, whilst silicon is still the default choice, we've now got a lot of areas, like charging, where we're actually reaching the limits of how fast it can conduct electricity which on one hand is seriously cool, but on the other hand means that there's got to be a material to replace it. Gallium nitride is shaping up to be just that, and it is way faster. In fact, on a very theoretical level, this gallium nitride that we're seeing in these new generation charges has the potential to conduct electricity 1,000 times more efficiently than silicon. These charges are based on an entirely different architecture, which will no doubt lay the foundation for a massive leap forward. And don't forget, these are first-gen products, so undoubtedly future iterations will be even more compact and even more powerful. But wait, there's more. Silicon gets hot quickly, gallium nitrate doesn't which means it's not just less prone to, well, blowing up, and so it's safer, but it also wastes less energy. All the energy that is turned into heat with a traditional charger is energy that's not being used to charge your device. If you've ever laid hands on a smartphone fast charger after it's been in use, or probably the worst culprit, one of these, then you'll know that that's a fair bit of wastage. Now, having this efficiency becomes even more important when you're on the go, when size and weight start to become a bit more of a problem. Get ready for power banks that are not just smaller and cooler, but charge faster, starting very soon. And when you combine this with the graphene battery tech that's on its way, people in 10 years will be laughing at the idea of carrying around something like this. Gallium nitride has one more, kind of surprising, implication. Cheaper charges. Because it can result in products with a smaller footprint, that means companies can spend less money on materials, less money on packaging, and therefore less on shipping their chargers too. Not to mention that because of its improved efficiency, using a gallium nitride charger would also mean less power draw and a cheaper electricity bill. Right now, there is a bit of a price premium, but that's really because it's just new tech. And well, these companies have the power to, but as soon as it becomes a competitive market, those prices are gonna fall straight down. Okay, this is a bit of a long shot, but if Apple started shipping their next generation iPhones with a gallium nitride charger, and they built their phones to fully utilize this tech, then with no increase to the size of the packaging, you could be getting a charger that works up to six times faster than the current ones. And that's really exciting. In fact, all of this is. But there's a bigger picture here. Some of the experts are saying that this compound is so potentially game-changing that if the entire world started adopting it, then worldwide power consumption could drop by 10 to 25%. And that's not factoring in all the other efficiency gains future products will have. And so the obvious spin-off of this is how fast can they build one of these chargers? And I'd be curious to know if you guys would want to see some sort of side-by-side -side charging speed comparison. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, if you could drop a sub, that would be massively appreciated. As always, my name is Aaron, and I'll catch you in the next one.